Hey everybody, I am Rosemary Minkler, super excited to be here with you this evening. I, uh, just a little bit about myself before we get into this workshop. Um, I'm a keyboardist, pianist, vocalist, producer, songwriter, anything, you name it, that's probably me. Um, and I've been working with Electronic Music Collective for almost maybe two years now. Um, so I teach with Electronic Music Collective in addition to making my own music and working as an audio engineer. Right now I'm in Connecticut, uh, not too far from the uh, Manhattan campus of Electronic Music. So uh, again, I'm excited to be here with you all this evening to do a little workshop on music theory in Ableton. You might be wondering what exactly that means. So me as a pianist, I'm kind of coming from a jazz background, um, got really obsessed with jazz in high school, and I went on to study uh, at Western Connecticut State University. So I actually studied audio and music production there. But the program I was in was really cool. The first two years I got to focus on piano, and for me, I specifically concentrated on jazz piano, so I took jazz piano lessons, uh, did ear training and all of that, uh, played in jazz combos, the jazz orchestra, so I would like to think that, um, you know, I have quite a, a lot of cool jazz chords under my hand, so I want to share all of the, my knowledge with you guys this evening. And so I'm excited to dive into, again, some music theory in Ableton. So I've got Ableton 10 Live open here, and I'm really excited to upgrade to 11. I've heard there's some really cool upgrades, updates, so I'm excited to get into that. But just using Ableton 10 today, and I actually just got a new sample pack, like right before I sat down here today, and this is uh, The Count Drums Volume 4. So The Count is a really cool producer. Um, I think he's based in Canada. And this is volume four of his drum samples, so you can see he's got a lot of cool drum loops, and I, I literally just kind of skimmed through some of them, and as you can see, I labeled some of them, so you know, a cool thing about Ableton is you can right-click your samples, and you can label them by different colors, so you can kind of, you know, pick and choose some of your favorite sounds, and then it all groups them together over here on the left side, um, you know, by the colors, so all of these ones that I went through in his drum samples are, are here um, grouped together. So yeah, I just went through some of some of his sounds, found some cool ones, and then I made a little a little loop-de-loop -loop here using this um, hat snare loop and a little kick drum. So let's take a listen real quick. And another important thing, I always remember to put a limiter on my master master track here, just an, a little mixing tip. So our limiter is in this audio effects and you know everything here is labeled alphabetically so if we just go down to L limiter we can drag it onto our master track and this is really important for just making sure that our song or our Ableton session doesn't get distorted, right? When our volume is too loud it tends to create clipping or this audio distortion which we don't want so just throwing the limiter on the master track is really great great way to make sure you know we're not causing any weird audio distortion in our song. So just a little mixing tip there. But let's take a listen, see what kind of vibe we're going with. It's you know only eight measures, but I kind of think it sounds pretty cool so far. Awesome. And I have it looped there, but um, you know, we can turn the looping off and all that. So, so far pretty simple. I'm probably going to add to this at some point, but just for now, just so we can kind of have a little, a little loop to try out some chords with, I figured this would be a good place to start. So again, we have our, you know, hat snare loop. So this is kind of just a combination of hi-hat and snare, which kind of might be annoying when we're going to mix because then we can't, you know, separate the hi-hat and the snare out. But if we just solo this and listen to it real quick. Okay. 
pretty vibey. You know, I love I love the Count's sounds are really, really saucy, you know, kind of uh, old school sort of sounding. So I'm really excited to, to work with these sounds some more. Um, so that's our hat snare loop and then our kick using this buckle kick. Um, just came up with a cool little kick pattern that I thought worked well with, with the loop. So again, just repeating that throughout. So now that I have a little loop going, um, there's a couple of things that we can do to get started with chords. And this first thing that I'm going to show you is actually one of my like low-key favorite features of Ableton, and this is the Convert Audio to MIDI feature, which I think is only available in the suite version. It's not available, you know, in like the free trial version. But this feature is like, if anything, one of the reasons why you should get Ableton uh, Live Suite. So uh, let's see, I'm going to go into my packs folder here, and this is actually an Ableton sample pack that I use with all of my Ableton classes for Electronic Music Collective. So I make sure all of my students download this Solid Sounds pack off of the Ableton website, and there's a bunch of other really cool free sample packs there, so feel free to check it out. This one is also free. So Solid Sounds, and then in the Samples folder, there's a Music Loops folder. And there's some really cool music loops in here, you know, some more um, electronic style, some more hip hop style, uh, and they're all, you know, kind of more chord based. So let's see if we just listen to a couple of them. The strings. So kind of a good variety of different sort of music loops. And let's see, I labeled this one green down here, so let's see what this sounds like. I must have liked it at some point. All right, I, I do think that's pretty cool. So let me open this up. And you notice that in each of these loops here, it kind of gives you um, a couple of different things that you can, you can look for when you're looking through these sounds. It gives you sort of the musical style, right? So minimal glitch, hip hop, those are kind of the styles or, you know, sort of genre of these loops. It also gives you the tempo. So, you know, our beats per minute. And in this case, this is uh, 174 beats per minute. And then since we're looking at music loops, you, again, these are more chord based or melody based. This also gives you the key. So in this case, we're in E minor, or at least that's what they tell us. So that's kind of nice. They, they give you the tonal center, um, which is again, really important when we're working with loops, when we're working with multiple layers of loops, we want to try to find stuff that works together. So let's see, maybe I'll use that. Let's, uh, if we actually hit play, we can sort of play back these loops with what I have in my timeline to see what might fit best. So let's see. I actually really like how this sounds, kind of more simple piano stuff. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this and drag it onto an audio track. Look at that. It fits perfectly. Eight measures. And so now what I can do, right, so this is audio rather, you know, versus MIDI, which we can use. So instead what I can do is click my audio clip and right click it. And if I go down here, there's a couple of different ver uh, a, a couple of different options that we can look at. So, convert harmony to new MIDI track, convert melody to new MIDI track, and convert drums to new MIDI track. So these kind of all hint at what they do. You know, convert drums to new MIDI track will take a drum loop and convert that to MIDI. So you can kind of work with a drum loop that maybe your drum friend sent to you. Convert melody to new MIDI track. This is for monophonic audio only. So say you have, you know, like a synth lead that's playing a really cool melody, you can convert that audio to a new MIDI track. Or if you have a, a synth bass line, you can convert that to MIDI. 
But what we're going to do is convert harmony to new MIDI track, and this is for any kind of polyphonic audio track, which this, in this case it is, since we're doing, you know, multiple notes at the same time. Sounds like these kind of are triads. We'll see what happens. So I'm going to hit convert harmony to new MIDI track. So it's analyzing the musical content of this audio clip. And once it analyzes it, it makes a whole new MIDI track. And so I can open this up. And let's see if it did a good job of converting it to MIDI. Sometimes it doesn't always work out. It looks like this, this one might not have done an amazing job, but let's see what it sounds like. So I'll solo this. Yeah, so already a little funky. So I might not end up going with this. Um, you know, sometimes it's just trial, trial and error. So let's get rid of this. And let's try, let's try this one. I thought this one sounded cool. Um, not quite as perfect timing wise, but we can, you know, always copy and paste this. So now I'll get rid of this track as well. So now I'll do the same thing, convert harmony to new MIDI track, and we'll see if this does a better job of analyzing the harmony. Again, sometimes it doesn't always work out, but like honestly, this is such a cool feature in my personal opinion because, you know, you can get started on, on chords without even having to, you know, play a keyboard. So let's hear the original audio clip. And let's see how it did converting. All right, still a couple of funky notes in there, but overall, I think it did a better job of converting this audio to MIDI. So I'm gonna stick with this, see what we can do from here. So now I'm going to turn off this original audio clip and I'm just going to close that track in case, you know, for some reason I want to go back to it. But from here, now that we have our audio converted to MIDI, there's a couple of different things I can do. So, you know, I can go into the MIDI clip and change MIDI notes around. Um, you know, I can change the rhythm of it if I want to. I can totally change the notes themselves. So a lot of different options here. And then also on the track itself, it automatically assigns an instrument rack. So it's using a couple of different Ableton instruments. First of all, this analog instrument, which is kind of more of um, a synthy sound. And then this electric instrument, which is more of this Rhodes electronic piano sound. And we can actually use these different um, fader knobs over here to change the sound of it, right? So synth to piano, I can make it sound more synthy if I want it to. Let's see. All right, so there were, you know, a couple of weird notes in there, which I can go and fix. Um, but for now, I'll just kind of work with this you know, to sort of demonstrate what's what's happening. So again, I can I can go into this instrument rack and change the balance between synth, the synth sound that they are uh, predetermined or, you know, this electronic piano sound, electric piano sound. But I can even go into the Ableton sounds and select my own sound. So if I wanted to go for that Rhodes sort of sound, I could go into piano and keys. And let's see, electric piano, maybe something like this, mellow. And I can just drag it onto the track and it'll replace the instrument rack that was already there. So now I don't need to worry about that. And let's see what this sounds like. So I think that sounds even better than, than it did before. I think this might be kind of more like a, a synthy sort of sound. So I can go into the synth patches and, you know, find one that I like. So. That's a 
that's kind of cool, especially since this is sort of, you know, these are all whole note chords or lasting for the whole measure. So this nice slow attack might be a cool, a cool sound for this sort of thing. Okay, so that totally changed it, and I think this this patch might be one of those chord patches, so a single note actually plays a whole chord, which we do not want. So let's try to find another sound. That could be cool. So again, just finding these different Ableton preset sounds, right? These are all built into Ableton. Right now my CPU is at 2%, which is amazing because, you know, sometimes it, it's very easily gets, gets pretty high up there. So this is a great way to just kind of use the built-in Ableton sounds to, you know, customize, customize things. So let's see how this sounds. Cool. So far, I think this is the, the best sound that I've tried out so far. And, you know, I can go in and change different parameters. So I can change, you know, the filter, the, the resonance. So a lot of different things that we can do just with this convert to MIDI feature. And again, this is kind of low-key one of my favorite features in Ableton. I think it's a really great way to get started on an idea without even having to touch an instrument. So this is especially good if you're if your piano traps aren't quite there yet, um, so this is a good way to, you know, take some audio loops or audio clips and convert them to MIDI, make them your own, you know, we can go into the MIDI clip and change the MIDI notes, um, and we can use either the built-in Ableton sounds or if you have your own VSTs that you want to work with. I would have highly recommend that you, you know, check this feature out in Ableton. I think it's, it's a good place to start. So that's one way that we can get started on a little chord idea um, is using the convert to MIDI feature. Another thing uh, that I like to think about, um, especially so this particular instance, I started with the drums. Usually I'll start with drums um, when I'm starting a new song, but sometimes I'll start with the chords. It really depends on what I'm feeling, um, but I was really excited to work with these count uh, drums that I just got. So. Today I'm starting with drums, you know, sometimes I'll start with, with a chord idea and then work the drums around that. Um, but now that we have the drums and we're, we're trying to find some chords to go with that, um, let's see, I've got my addictive keys on this MIDI track and you'll be able to see what I'm playing down here um, using my MIDI. So we can do convert harmony to MIDI. Uh, another thing that honestly I do a lot of the time is actually finding inspiration from other songs. So something that I recently, uh, like another song that I actually recently recorded as part of a project was What's Going On by Marvin Gaye. And I was playing through the song and I really, really loved the bridge chords, which, let me go over to my keyboard real quick. So uh, what's going on is, for the most part, in the key of E major. But the bridge is really, really unique. It goes to A minor 9, which is totally different from E major, right? They're, they don't really have much in common. Um, I guess the only notes would be, you know, like B, E, um, and I guess A for the fourth. But I thought it was really, really interesting that it went from, you know, this E major to this A minor sound for, for the bridge. And the bridge is mostly staying on that A minor 9 chord, but from the A minor 9 chord, it goes to a B sus. And that made me like the transition even more because it's going, again, from that, you know, A minor 9 sound back to this sort of E major sound. And I thought it worked really, really flawlessly. So I was kind of toying with the idea of taking those two chord, chordal tones, uh, you know, chordal ideas, the A minor nine to the to the B sus, 
and kind of trying to put a chord in between that would help sort of transition between the two chords. So I was kind of messing with the A minor 9 to this E sus. And this is one of my favorite chord voicings um, for jazz, for R&B, for literally anything. So what I'm doing is I'm playing the root in my left hand, and I'm playing a rootless voicing of a minor 7 chord in my right hand. So this is a rootless voicing for B minor 7. So I have the 7th, the ninth, the 3rd, and the 5th in my right hand. Right, so this is B minor 7, but with E in the root. And this creates a really, really great uh, dominant 7 sus voicing. And what makes it sus or suspended is, is this A here, right? So I love using these these sus voicings, um, even not only as you know a way back to the one chord, but as the one chord themselves. So if I were to do this same chord voicing for A7 sus, what you do is you take the fifth of the root, right? So the fifth of A is E. So I'm going to use an E minor 7 rootless voicing. So E minor 7 is E, G, B, D. And the rootless voicing I would use for this is G, B, D, F sharp. So this has the 3rd, the 5th, the 7th, and the ninth. So I'm playing this E minor 7 chord with A in the root. And I can do this starting on any note, right? So, you know, um, let's see, F7 sus, I'm playing C minor 7 in my right hand, F in my left hand. I can do the same thing for B flat 7 sus. So in my left hand, I'm playing root, the root B flat, and in my right hand, I'm playing F minor 7. I guess technically F minor 9, since we're doing the rootless voicing. So back to the Marvin Gaye what's going on idea. Again, starting with this A minor 9. And I like having this half step here between B and C. I think that kind of adds sort of a warm quality to the to the voicing. You can add the the sixth in here. So going from this A minor 9 to this E7 sus, and then we're ending on this B sus. Again, so doing the same thing with uh, that we did with our E7 sus, except with B as the root, right? So B is the root, so my right hand is going to be playing F sharp minor 7, the rootless voicing of that. And another reason why this works so well, especially this iteration of the what's going on idea, is that in my left hand, the root notes are going down in, uh, in uh, fourths. So starting on A, down to E, So this kind of gives it a really cool forward motion um, and kind of helps connect the chords to one another, even though A minor is totally different from that B sus, you know, E sort of sound. And this idea I just got from, you know, thinking about the what's going on bridge, 
you, you know, using two different chords that are totally different from one another. So again, I get really inspired by learning other songs, especially songs that I'm super into at the time. So if we try to use this sort of idea over our, our beat, let's see what it sounds like. Awesome. So I think that worked really well. Definitely let me know what you think in the chat below. If you thought it didn't work well or could be a little bit different. I also tried to kind of um, do the rhythm of the chords uh, kind of in sync with the kick drum. I think that, that the kick drum is sort of that moving moving force of the song, kind of like the heartbeat. So for me, when I'm trying to figure out the uh, harmonic rhythm of the chords, right, what beat of the measure the chords land on, I try to think of the relationship of the chords to the kick drum. So that's another thing I kind of think about. Because otherwise you can just play the chords for a whole measure, which gets a little boring, you know, in some contexts that might work. But for me, especially coming from a jazz standpoint, I think the harmonic rhythm is really important. So we can kind of switch up when these chords are happening in the measure. So now let's listen back real quick. Cool. So I think it works really well from here sorry <laughs> from here uh i'm gonna add a new mini track and usually i start with the chords and then work my way to bass um and usually i'll do synth bass i'm trying to work on my bass chops can't say i'm quite there uh but one of the sounds that i really love for synth bass is actually an ableton preset so i'm just gonna search in this sounds category hip hop bass and by the way if you have any further questions about the sus chords I was talking about, feel free to, um, you know, type in the chat. I know it's kind of going from zero to a hundred, so definitely feel free to type your questions in the chat. I'm happy, happy to answer. So I love this hip hop sub bass. Again, it's an Ableton preset, so really nice on my CPO. It's still at 2%. So I just dragged it onto this new MIDI track and let's see. Awesome. So now I can try to track some synth bass. And uh, this is sort of going along with the harmonic rhythm that I was talking about, the, you know, the, the rhythm of the chords themselves. When I'm playing synth bass, I also try to sync it up with the kick drum. So in this case, our kick drum pattern sounds like this. So bump up, bump bump. Boom. So now when I'm recording synth bass, I am going to try and um, try and sort of sync up with that that sound, or sorry, with that rhythm of the kick drum. Oh, sorry. Try one more time. Awesome. I could still hear the piano, like it sounded like I was playing synth bass and piano at the same time. Let me know if that's what you heard too. So sorry, that just kind of threw me off, which is why I had to re-record. But we should be able to just hear the sub bass now. 
And I might go in um, to the piano track and just kind of get rid of some of these lower notes since, you know, the synth bass is already playing them. That way we don't, you know, they won't get in the way of each other, which is another important thing to consider when you're making your, your songs is that you don't really, you know, it's okay to play the root in your chords. There's totally nothing wrong with that. But in this case, since the bass that I was playing in the piano part was kind of rhythmic and sort of taking some liberties, I felt that it was better to just, you know, take it out and focus on the synth bass for, for the low end. So let's listen back. Awesome. So I feel like this is a really great start to, to an idea. And again, this was just taking uh, What's Going On by Marvin Gaye. I was really inspired by the bridge and just kind of playing on those chords. So if you're feeling stuck, you know, you can start with convert harmony to new MIDI track and kind of come up with some chords that way without even touching an instrument. Or you can learn some chords to your favorite songs and that to me always is inspiring, um, kind of playing off of those chords. So this is our idea number two. I, I like where this is going so far. So I am going to delete all of this. I know it's a little scary, but I'm going to start over and share another idea, another way that I'll maybe start start um, thinking of some chords for for my songs. So one way is learning some of my favorite songs getting inspired by that another way which is kind of more uh in the jazz sort of realm is the idea of taking one note and harmonizing that one note and i know robert glasper is really i don't know if he i would say famous for doing this but this is definitely uh in, in the same vein as robert glasper who is an amazing amazing jazz pianist um so one thing that's common, especially not only in his music, but just in modern jazz in general, is the idea, again, of taking this one note and harmonizing around this note. And a really great jazz standard that does this is a song by Dizzy Gillespie called Con Alma. So the main melody note is this G sharp. And... So now you can you can hear. I think actually, so I'm using Muse Score for this down here. Oh, okay. All right, so everything should be good. So I'm using Muse Score, which is great for stuff like this, where you can see what I'm playing in real time. So back to Con Alma. So the main melody at the beginning of Con Alma is this G sharp, similar to what's going on. We're in the key of E major. So you can see that it's that what he does with this song is he's taking this one note and he's changing the chords underneath it. And for the most part, it's staying in this E major sort of sound. But then once we get to this B flat, it totally changes, right? So E major seven, this would be, you know, a G sharp seven uh, in second inversion. So we have our fifth on the bottom. So G sharp seven in second inversion to our C sharp minor. Again, to our B sus, this is what we were using in the last example. And then once we get to this B flat, we still have the same note on top, but the function of that note changes. So we're going from E major to now we're kind of going to E flat, right? So this is our B flat seven sus. Again, these sus chords, these seven sus chords are so great. You can use them in really any sort of context. And 
And then from here we do a two five one, right, to D flat major. And two five ones are also great, a great thing to practice, not only for songwriting, but just you know in general for your to get comfortable with piano and playing chords. So two five one to D flat major. And from here, we're doing sort of the same thing, but now our melody note is this F, and we're kind of, you know, going in the key of D flat major. So D flat major, F7, again in second inversion, we have C as the root, B flat minor 7. A flat seven sus again these sus chords and now totally different so we're going from our A flat seven sus to our G seven sus so this is just kind of an example of how you can take one note and change the harmonic function of that note over time so already we've gone to three different keys, E major, E flat, D flat, and we just ended on C major. So if we take the same idea and let's say we choose D as our common note, there's a lot of places that we can start. We can start on E minor 7, we can start on A flat 7 sharp 11, I actually kind of really like that, this major 7 sharp 11 to dominant 7 sharp 11. So again, just taking this common note and changing what's happening beneath it. And this is actually something I kind of did with that intro song that you heard. That's actually an original of mine called High Tides, so the intro to that was kind of like... Alright, so this E flat major 7 to sort of a D7 flat 9, like a dominant flat 9 chord. So again, choosing one note to be kind of your quote-unquote melody note or your common tone and changing the chords uh, beneath that. So let's see. I'm going to try sticking with that sort of... Um, yeah, we'll stick with the D for our common tone. So I'm just going to try out a couple of different things here. There was a lot of really cool stuff in there. I'm just kind of messing around with somewhat similar, similar chord progression, trying to find something that sticks. So I like what I was playing at the end there. So 
so let's see I'm just gonna cut this up drag it over here we'll do actually I want to hear this sort of same thing this is one annoying part about Ableton in my opinion So we're going to stick with this idea. So this was doing, if I'm remembering correctly, this was sort of like a E minor chord to E flat to a D7 to G minor or F minor. Um, let's see. Yep, F minor. Um, so let's listen back, see what's happening. going to do is actually extend this last chord just a little bit because I think it ends a little abruptly. So I'm just selecting that entire chord and dragging to the right so now it lasts for a lot longer and just command D all of these to duplicate. So again, uh, now I have some chords laid down. I might go back and re-record it just so I don't have the bass notes in there. Um, but just to get some synth bass down, I kind of like what I was playing there, actually. Um, so I'm just going to record some synth bass, uh, sort of with that same, same idea. And, you know, again, I try to try to sync up my synth bass with the kick drum. But I also sometimes, sometimes just try to go wild with the synth bass and play it more like a melody, if you, if you kind of think of it like that. So something like that, that's a little bit more melodic. Let's try this out. I got it. Somewhere in there, I got it. So again, I can do a similar thing where I just pick out one of these, you know, spots. Uh, let's see. See if that sounded good. Alright, so I'm just gonna command D. Command D is one if if you learn any shortcut in Ableton, it should be command D. <laughs> That's the one that will save you a lot, a lot of time and, you know, help you flesh out your ideas a little bit quicker. Okay, let's see how this sounds all together now. So far, this one might be my favorite. Let me know what you guys think down below, what you all think down below. Um, so again, this is kind of like, I guess this is the third option. This is the third kind of tip that I would give you to, for a place to start with learning chords, you know, again, the convert audio to MIDI, um, you know, learning some of your favorite songs and kind of working off of the chords of those songs and then this option which is taking a note and harmonizing around that note but ultimately what i want to want you guys to think about is how your bass note and your melody or your top note interact with one another to me this is the most important part 
you know, those are kind of the bass note and the top note are really the two notes that most people's ears will gravitate towards. So I think this is this is you know the most important relationship harmonically. Um, and actually, one song that I wrote this was for a uh, project when I was in college. This was like my capstone project. I recorded an album with my piano trio. Um, and actually, I have the chart here, so let me bring that up. So this song is called Step Wide. And the whole idea behind this song was to have the bass line go up chromatically, right? So starting on F sharp. Now let me change back to piano so you don't hear synth bass for this whole thing. So again, just taking uh, the bass note up a half step for you know each chord. Uh, and, you know, the chords could vary in the harmonic rhythm, so it doesn't have to be for a whole measure, it doesn't have to be for quarter notes or whatever. So the bass note starting on this F sharp and going up a half step. Oh. Okay. So, alright, there we go. Pedal issue. So starting on the F sharp, going up a half step. And the last note in this progression is this E flat. So, um, again, with this song, I started with the idea that the bass note would move up a half step every time. And around that, I kind of made a little melody and sort of filled in the chords accordingly. So, if I, um, let me just play the whole thing for you all together, and then I'll do just the bass notes and the melody. So that's the whole thing together, but if I pick it apart and just play the root notes and the melody, this is what it sounds like. So again, you know, just finding the way to uh, make the bass note, the root notes, and the melody work together, to me, is the most important part. Um, and again, this is just an example. I set a limitation to my for myself. Uh, again, just starting with the bass note and working up chromatically and sort of filling in the rest according to that. So setting limitations is another really important thing that I like to do when I'm writing music. Um, and yeah, so for this, you know, the harmonic rhythm was mostly one chord per measure, but uh, when I got to the C major chord, it sort of felt like a, a release of tension, so I felt like that chord needed a little bit more time. Um, and that's another thing that I also try to think about, another really important thing in any kind of music is this tension and release, because ultimately, that's all that music is, is just like, you know, it's a building up of tension and then ultimately releasing it. So kind of starting with some tension, you know, this isn't a very <laughs> pretty chord, this like Phrygian sound. So even just from, from here to here, that, that itself is like this sort of tension release. So to me, this C major chord just felt like a big, nice breath out. So I wanted to make this two measures long instead of, you know, just one measure. Again, another 7 sus chord. I can't tell you how, how much I use these chords. Like, once you learn these chords, this voicing, it will change your life. <laughs> So two seven sus chords back to back, chromatically apart. Mm -hmm. 
So another thing for you to think about is this relationship between the root note and the melody. Because again, ultimately those two notes are all that people are really going to be hearing. You know, that's going to be the main notes that they'll be hearing. The, all the stuff in between is, you know, just color. You're adding different, different shades of color. Um, so that's another thing to think about. Um, the last thing I would recommend for coming up with different chord progressions is actually playing an entirely different instrument. So recently I've actually been not playing as much piano, unfortunately, and I've actually been really focusing on guitar. So let me actually just save this real quick. This is a really cool idea. So maybe I'll play with it later. It's April Fool's Day. Crazy. Uh, so, again, like I was saying, another thing uh, is trying out an instrument that you've never played before or, you know, an instrument that you're maybe not as good at. Um, so this is a session that I've been working on. Uh, like I said, I've been playing a lot of guitar lately, which has been really fun. It's kind of like when you're learning a new language and you can only express yourself in, like, the most basic terms. Sometimes the sentences that you make might be the best sentences you've ever spoken. So you never know when you're playing another instrument what will come out. Um, so like I said, this is a little session. I actually recently posted this on my Instagram. Very proud of it. It's very simple, but I really like how it came out. And like I said, I started with this guitar idea, playing a few chords here and there. So let's play this. <laughs> So very simple, you know, it's four chords. So A major seven, A major seven. Um, don't know if I might have to add another MIDI track in here so you can hear it. Um, so starting with, with A major seven, going to B flat diminished. So kind of playing again on this, not only chromatic idea, but, you know, focusing on the root notes. And then going to B minor 7, ending on E7. So, again, I started this on guitar. Uh, again, a very simple chord progression that I might not have come up with on piano, because, you know, when I'm sitting at piano, I'm trying to come up with, like, the weirdest stuff since I've been playing it for such a long time. So to be able to play on the guitar and come up with these really simple ideas was super inspiring. Um, so let me play this for you real quick, and I'll explain a little bit more. So for this one, yeah, I started with the chords. I know in the uh, previous examples, I was kind of working with the drums first and then playing chords according to that. But for this one, this was an instance where I started with the chords and kind of built the drums around that kind of, you know, that bossa nova sort of feel. Um, so yeah, I recorded the guitar. The drums are pretty minimal, you know, just kick, snare, and this hi-hat loop. Uh, nothing too crazy going on. Um, for this one, I actually played electric bass, so pretty happy about that as well. Definitely want to work on my bass chops. I feel like that's that's the next level I'm trying to unlock. And then I added some Rhodes, just playing my Nord. Um, so yeah, overall a pretty pretty basic, you know, 
basic idea, but again, I wouldn't have necessarily come up with this if I wasn't playing guitar, if I had never come up with that idea. So trying your hand at a different instrument, maybe if you're a guitarist, playing some more keys, um, it's a really, really great way to, to stay inspired. I know for me especially, I've been playing piano for, I don't know, 20 years or so, so to learn guitar and to you know, again, start as a beginner is a little, a little, uh, maybe not embarrassing, but a little more vulnerable than me just sitting at the piano. So I think it came up, it brought out some really interesting ideas for me. And I'm excited to keep working on guitar. So, uh, you know, this was just another, another session I wanted to share with you. Um, in case you didn't notice, I usually do my drums just dragging the audio in there, but I know a lot of people will either build their own drum racks, which I will also do occasionally. Um, but for me, you know, dragging and dropping for me is the easiest way to kind of get a good sound going. I can't really play on the MIDI controller for me. Doing drums on the MIDI controller doesn't work out, but um, it's all about just finding your own workflow. So this works for me. Um, but just to kind of recap, you know, a couple of different ways to start chords for your sessions, for your song ideas. One is to do the convert to MIDI option, right? So I could even do this with the guitar. I don't know if it would work very well. Um, you know, convert harmony to new MIDI track. It's a really great way to get started on a chord idea without even having to touch an instrument. So again, this is a really great, um, first of all, a really great feature of Ableton and also a really great feature for people who might not be as comfortable playing piano or guitar or any instrument in general. So convert to MIDI. Another great way to get started on some chord ideas is to learn some of your favorite songs and maybe get inspired by some of the chord progressions that you really enjoy. Try to figure out what about them do you really like, you know, trying to pick apart the logistics, the not logistics, but the harmonic function of each chord, trying to pick out how, how the, all the chords work together. Um, so learning some of your favorite songs. Another option is to kind of pick a note, it could be any note, and harmonize around that note, right? So change the harmonic function of that note, depending on the root note and whatever else you might fill in. And then, you know, this last suggestion is to play an entirely different instrument. So learn a new instrument if you have the the option to do that, or if you have an old guitar hanging around or an old keyboard hanging around just you know it can it can it can be by ear you don't have to even take a lesson on that instrument just kind of picking out a couple of different sounds that you know might be interesting to you and running with that so again if you have any questions feel free to drop them in the chat i know i kind of went over a lot of different stuff um but i hope it was helpful for you you know i didn't really feel the need to talk um you know about you know chord functions and all that so this is kind of giving you some ideas of where to start with making your chords and again thinking about the relationship between the root note and your top note or your melody note to me that's the most important part so try thinking about the, that the next time you're sitting down at your instrument or sitting down at ableton um, but I hope this was really helpful. I do want to thank Electronic Music Collective for giving me the time and the space to talk with you all this evening. Uh, I'm right now teaching an accelerated Ableton course and, you know, there's more courses coming. Um, so feel free to sign up. We also do have private lessons. So if you like what you heard from me, you can take a private lesson either in Ableton or Pro Tools, or Logic, or any one of those, or if you want to learn more about keyboard, um, how I think about playing piano, uh, feel free to reach out and have a private lesson at Electronic Music Collective. We also have a bunch of other amazing instructors, mentors, so feel free to go to the website, electronicmusiccollective.com. We've got a really, a lot of cool stuff coming up, so feel free to sign up for a class or a private lesson. And yeah, feel free to hang out in the chat or reach out to me. And thank you all for coming this evening to this live stream workshop.